Welcome back to the PSA World Tour. It's been over 20 months since we've seen the biggest event of the year. And now it's all come together once again here in Chicago, presented to you by the Walter family. It's the PSA World Championships, a wonderful historic venue here at the University of Chicago University Club in the Cathedral Hall. Last night we saw some serious Egyptian dominance in both the semi-finals. They really are the powerhouse of world squash at the moment. Never ceases to disappoint this glass court here. This is what they're playing for. It's the biggest event for all these players. They've waited such a long time, but now we are finally here for the last day of this event. We're ready here in Chicago. Let's get the players on for you. Then we'll start with a player who makes her 269th appearance on the PSA World Tour. She's the current world number two and makes uh, her 10th PSA title. It could be 11 this evening. She beat Cami Serm in the semi-finals by three games to love. If she wins tonight, she will also become the new world number one. It's her first world championship final, her seventh world championships. Let's hear it for the Terminator, Nurangoha! Tonight, she's up against the current world number one, making her 346th appearance on the PSA World Tour. 24 PSA World titles, and she beat American Amanda Sobey by three games to love in her semi-final. She's not dropped a single game uh, in the tournament so far, so that's five matches without dropping a game. She's a four-time world champion. It's her 10th world championships, and the first woman to make six straight world championship finals. Let's hear it for Egypt's warrior princess, Noor El Shabini. Here we have it, the PSA World Championship final between the two best players in the world at the moment. Noor El Shabini, the defending champion. You barely get my words out on that excited. Taking on the Terminator, Noron Gahar, the world number two. It is the perfect scenario. Service box. Desperately trying to harry. Here we go. And the demeanors of these two completely different as well. And out seven all. Goodness me, this uh, sorry to. She was only asking for the pickup. She actually cancelled her review. So we got there in the end. Oh. Yeah, she knew that was that was a solid pattern of play there. Eight, seven. That rally, and almost easy to pick off that cross court from Gohar. I was just thinking, Joe, you, the, you see how relaxed Shabini's father is, and if your daughter's playing this caliber of squash, you can relax, can't you? Oh. I mean, it, you, you're just looking at. It's just an app, it's just like a, just an absolute masterclass. It's so it's so good. It's so slick and it's so tidy. Oh, oh, oh my word. I mean it was down. I mean this is just again, yeah. look at this. So good. There's no no chance there. No. It's perfect. There was, there was space between it and the tin. The ball, no, perfect. the ball is good, 9-7. We can't check the 10, unfortunately. You did it last No, we didn't. This player could be going two games to love down in this final. Quite short time duration. I will say, though, that given the fact that we have all we've talked about is how good Shabini is playing. 22 minutes we've had so far. And it's Shabini that leads two games to love. She plays every point like match point. But already there's an opening that's developing now for Shabini in the score line in the third. I mean, yeah, but going for a 
that nick off the serve at six all instead of trying to uh, um, get a rally going, as you said, Joey. I mean, there's some decisions in there that aren't great. There we go again. Two game balls. Breathe more life into this final. Down. Oh, it's a big miss. It's a big miss. Naronga. She's asking for a new ball. She wants that bouncy, a livelier ball. Clever from her. 35 minutes between these two fantastic players, and it's Norel Shabini that leads two games to one. Feel at the front of the court. I mean, it's flying around, isn't it, out there? And high bounce, she's still taking it in beautifully. She is. I was just watching Shabini in that rally and watching her movement, she definitely looks like she's ever so slightly later on the board than well, she was previously. What are you thinking, Ashley? Oh, I'm delighted that we're getting a final. It was it was looking a bit shaky there, and Gohar's really, she's thrown everything at Sherbini. And for me, she actually looks like she's the playing the better of the two. <laughs> she's playing the better of the two in this fourth game. Seven, six. Oh, this is now biting stuff. She's regrouped. She's looked yeah. a lot perkier. And out nine eight. Just edging it, 9-8. Oh my oh goodness me, that time. was a terrific shot. How important, Ashley. How, <laughs> well, let's not underestimate it. If she'd have lost at that point, it would have given Shabini a match ball, championship ball rather. So. For Gohar to be this close after being completely outplayed for the first two games, if she gets this game, this could be really interesting. So that confidence of Shabini will have to be shaken. Video referee decision on Shabini's appeal. We're going for a video referee decision here. It's a big call. It's a heavy shot. Again, I, I don't see what no, I Shabini can do. It's going to be a stroke. Looks like a stroke. I mean, yeah, the ball's the come straight bounce. back. It's going to be a stroke. I think it's quite a simple decision, really. Stroke to Shabini. Well. That stroke. And out. Gives North El Shabini. Championship ball. Championship ball.
World Championship title at the grand old age of 25 here in Chicago. Pretty ironic that she finished that on a backhand volley drop from that area of the court. Unbelievable. Quite majestic squash. Just uh, certainly bubbling over this ladies final. 53 minutes. Norel Shabini overcoming the world number two and number two seed Naronga Hart three games to one. Good evening and welcome back to the PSA World Championships. We've already seen Norel Shabini crowned women's champion this year in 2020, 2021. It's now time for the men's final coming to you live from Chicago. Chicago, are you still there? I know a couple of them have popped off to the bar, but they'll be back in their seats in time for the men's final. Let's get both players out onto court for you. We've got the world number one and world number two in action for you this evening in the men's half of the draw. Uh, we'll start with a player who makes his 577th appearance on the PSA World Tour. 43 PSA titles, and it's his 13th World Championships. A winner back in 2017, and he beat Paul Cole by three games to one in his semi-final match yesterday. Guaranteed to become the new world number one at the end of the World Championships. We know him as the Beast of Alexandria. Let's hear it for Mohamed El Shabagi. His opponent this evening is the current world number one and makes his 340th appearance on the PSA World Tour. 21 PSA titles and a fifth world championship. Winner back in March 2019 and we're going to raise the roof for him here tonight as he beat Tarek Moment in his semi-final by three games to two. He's played a staggering 223 minutes so far in the tournament from Cairo, from Egypt. Let's hear it for Ali Farag! Never ever looked like getting into position for that shot. Seven five. Going back to uh, Ashley, the situation with the more physical match with the Tarek moment yesterday for Ali Farag. First game, obviously, for him is, is, a, is a must must. He must win the first game here. It's a must. Doesn't want to be playing from behind. Definitely not. He, I feel he will get the lack of focus. We see it already. Slight, slight lack of focus every now and again from Trebaggy, which is resulting in those unforced errors. And they're coming from the three sectors of the court the front, the mid, and the back. And now, unfortunately, he can't rely on that lack of focus to win a match. Oh. Oh, a bit of fortune there for Mohamed Al Shabagi, but he'll take that all day long.
A clever tactic by Ali Farag. He's really not giving anything, and now I say it, anything to the backhand volley of El Shabagi. He knows how dangerous it is. So when he's choosing to play on that side, he's either gluing it to the wall or hitting lower on the front wall so that there's no volley option. Makes the boast error. And up six eight. Still a two point lead for Mohamed El Shabagi. It's a lovely attack from Farag. Oh, it's beautiful. It's the area. So strong. Trademark, flick cross court. It's good work from Farag. Terrific movement. Ali Farag is playing his best stuff. He did this in the earlier rounds, Lee, where he stepped up the court. He seemed to have backed off a little bit against Diego Elias and a little bit at times against Tarek Moment. But when he steps up the court like that and he's aggressive and anticipates the volley, that's when he's at his most dangerous. And it suits his style of game. It suits his technique because he doesn't need a big backswing and he can generate a lot of pace from small swings. So volleying is what he should be doing. comedy situation there it's, it's not a funny scenario for Ali Farag he's three game balls down here Mohamed El Shabagi will look to take this first time down. Four, seven. Error. four error is such a high occasion for Farag Mohamed El Shabagi gets the first game under his belt 17 minutes so a decent duration that's for sure but it's El Shabagi that leads one game to love well, here we have it. He's got to step up to the mark. I keep saying this. There's glimpses for Ali Farag, but Ahmed El Shabagi has been able to play three, four, sometimes five points clear of his opponents. He gets that lead early on, and he's so, so good, particularly in this event, at keeping that lead. Al Shabagi leads one game to love. Farag's got to get the start here. Love all. But I think that was a big opportunity missed by Ali Farag in that last game. I don't think he's going to get the same opportunities handed to him. I don't think El Shabagi is going to hit the same amount of errors as he did in that first game. No, I don't either, unless something very extraordinary happens. The first game was a necessity for Ali Farag to win. It was also the, the way he lost it at the, the end, a very casual trickle boast into the from the front right. One love. You know, resulting in the error.
to love. chance of this being a left ball. Barak clutching at straws here. He's asking for a scoop, for a decision. For a double bounce, a tin. Now. You're not going to lose anything if you just shake it. No, I'm satisfied with what it is. Well, Sheldon Anderson say six love. He looks a bit lost on there. Not sure what to do to win points against El Shabagi. Mohamed El Shabagi 7 1 up. Ali Farag is not playing very well here. Unless Mohamed just has a complete drop off with his concentration and focus, but there's no way that's happening. Look, yeah, it's a <laughs> no nice lead. Said it yesterday, his tee position is almost at top points, nearly in front of the short line. Well, there's the yellow, 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 but it's a, a real mountain to climb. He's got to fight for every point here, Ali Farag. He doesn't want to be, you know, he's got this is the world championship final. He can't get any bigger than this. Poor service dealt with. We saw it yesterday, it's the exactly the same, same situation happened, serving to the forehand side, Paul Cole, and it was dispatched, cross-court Nick. Back again, when his back's against the wall, he'll go on the attack, Shabagi. Well, Farag needs to continue the good work that he's put in to get to this point. What he can't do is drop off and sit back. Absolutely everything to get these balls back. Terrific rally. Oh, oh wow! Unbelievable rally. Wonderful rally. Shabagi just losing his footing, but that's when Ali Farad's playing his best squash, moving the ball like that. It's a wonderful rally. Baggy managing to regain his composure after the slip. Luckily, that front leg didn't disappear out because we've seen so many nasty injuries in the past. Got, I mean, his forehand, he just... A very clean line. He's got a game ball. He's on the rampage. Oh, that looked a bit, a little bit strange. He's still in the rally. Oh my word, he's doing some lunges. Oh. What is he doing? That's good to her. Oh my oh, god, That was absolutely brilliant. Goodness me, the movement from Mohamed Al Shabagi. He's absolutely caning his movement here. Ali Farag smiling away. He needs to concentrate. He's got Mohamed Raki. He's going to have to give that back to him. He'll need that to play on. 20 minutes we've had now. This, look at that. There. And then. Must oh, diagonal, <laughs> the slide. Just ridiculous <laughs> movement from him here. It looked like he's on a clay court. I think Thank he's you. got to really impact on the hips as well, well that area. You can see his heel is landing really hard and his toe isn't actually connecting with... 
um, the floor. Well, again, serving to the forehand side after another physical rally, Ali Farag has got to serve it at the body. He's got to take this opportunity, Farag, if you're far between. Why is he cross-courting that from that front right? Farag is reading it, and it's not wide enough. Stroke to Farag. Well, it's going to be an appeal here, Lee, but I think from that first image, it's quite clear cut. Yeah, I think Shabagi's just stuck there. He doesn't get out of the way. It's his base after that. He's not able to get out of the way of the ball. So it is upheld, Ali Farag finally gets his foot in the door. There's Mike Way just pointing to the mind. World Championship final, he's going to have to dig so, so deep. 42 minutes, a terrific second game. Ali Farag kicks off the third game. A lovely shot, good movement. Farag's movement looking superb. Three game balls for Farag. He's got it, he's got it. <laughs> he's getting everything. <laughs> he almost clotheslined him. <laughs> Goodness me. We would have seen Ali Farag running around without a head there. Hi, legs going like the clappers. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make a difference though. It finally gone the wrong way. Hand Ooh. out eight to ten game ball. Possibly. Still two game balls though. For Farag to take two one lead. Adam, thank you. It's well finished. So Shabagi's responding. Nine, ten. Shabagi's responding. Oh, my word. Oh. <laughs> the oh, goodness, that's an outrageous shot. It's an outrageous shot. That took some nerve from Farag. The Farag flick. Usually, he likes to play that cross-court lob from that quite bizarre position where he breaks his wrist. 56 minutes of world-class squash. It's 2-1 to Ali Farag. to Shabagi in the World Tour Finals against Mustafa Rassal. Ali Farag is serving with seven championship balls for his second World Championship. One's got...
video referee decision. <laughs> okay. re well, Sheldon <laughs> Anderson has given it to the video official here, Lee. Now, I feel that this is going to be a stroke. It's one of those ones where you really want it to be a let so that you see Ali Farag win the point outright without the decision. I mean, that's going to be a stroke, isn't it? Yeah. It is a stroke. Ali Farag <laughs> takes the title here in Chicago. Absolutely fantastic, really. Terrific battle between the two players. Mohamed El Shabagi leaving absolutely everything out there, as he always does. He will be the world number one in August, but Ali Farag is the world champion here in Chicago. And he can smile for a long, long time now. He's been waiting, all the players have waited 20 months, pretty much, to play the world championships. And it's Ali Farag that wins it for the second time here in Chicago. He loves this place, he loves this city, obviously. 68 minutes coming back from one game to love down to win three games to one for Ali Farag. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for your 2021 world champions, Ali Farag and Noor El Shabini.